Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, Sometimes it takes us a lot to be here. Maybe you're like me and are a little depressed. Haven't had enough coffee yet this morning or just have been in a rush. So we take a little bit of time at the beginning of worship to just kind of gather together and prepare our hearts and minds for our time together in praise of God. And so let's start off with a centering song to help us do that this morning. I'm going to take a moment for a temple talk and I'll invite Savannah Baumgarten up to the pulpit and as she makes her way there, let me tell you a story. Uh, the little gray house on the corner of this um, block is the Aspire ND building and let me tell you how that came to be. In about, about three, four years ago, two things happened at about the same time. That little gray house had been your parsonage so that was where pastors lived. And then you bought, as a congregation, the brown house on the corner so the pastors could have a larger house to live in. So that little gray house was left empty with not a real clear plan on what would happen next to that property. At the same time, Lutheran Social Services of North Dakota, our social ministry partners, suddenly went bankrupt and closed. So all their many programs, we weren't sure what would happen to all of those programs. And one of those programs was called Healthy Families. And that's a statewide program that for many decades has proved its worth. Uh, it has in the end saved the state money in the way that it walks alongside families. So that is one program that stayed alive because of some really hard work by a lot of people. That is now part of the work of Aspire ND that happens out of that little gray house, not only for Southwest North Dakota, but for the whole state. So that's how you came to be the congregation that helps host one of those really important programs that walks with families. And Savannah's gonna tell you a little bit more, and then we actually get to hear a story from one of the families impacted by that work on a video after Savannah speaks. And later, after worship, you can tour that little gray house, the Aspire ND building, uh, and I really encourage you to do that because it's really cool in there, the way that they care for families. There's also lemonade and cookies, but go for the tour. There's a lot of great stuff to see. Thank you so much, Savannah. Thank you, Pastor Lisa. So my name is Savannah Baumgarten, and I am the program coordinator for our Healthy Families program here in Dickinson. First, I just wanna say thank you for letting me share more about our work and mission here with you this morning. Healthy Families is a home visiting program that supports families prenatally through early childhood. We offer services for three years following enrollment. We know that all parents wanna be the best parents that they can be, but sometimes life gets hard and can feel, every day can feel like a fork in the road moment, which can be overwhelming. We know that parenting is doing the best you can with what you have, and sometimes all of us parents need a little extra help. That's where we come in. We take time to listen to each family's unique story and meet them where they're at on their parenting journey. 
We work hard to strengthen our communities by supporting not only maternal and children's well-being, but also by using a evidence-based curriculum that uses a family approach and supporting positive parenting and discipline, stress reduction, bonding and attachment, and supporting children's development. We work to help families build resilience in the most critical years of a child's life, which is the ages of zero to three. As a nonprofit, all of our services are provided to families free of charge. To provide these critical services, we rely heavily on our community partners, and we cannot do this work without the help of others generously supporting our mission. As you take time this month to pray on how to share your gifts, we thank you for considering healthy families. Your generosity helps us continue to meet families on their parenting journeys, supporting them as they walk through parenting and helps us build stronger, more empathetic and resilient communities for the future. I could stand here all morning and share with you all the great things Healthy Families does, but I think to get the true picture, it comes best from a family that is enrolled in our program to hear the impact it has made for them. We are so grateful that they were vulnerable in sharing their story and allowing us to be a part of their journey. Thank you. Hi, my name is Drew Lunday, and I would like to share my story and how I got connected with Healthy Families and how it helped me. I came from a family where, you know, you felt like a burden. There was no love within the family. We weren't connected as a family, and there was no support for one another. Um, most of my family suffered with substance abuse, including myself. Growing up, I always felt alone, always secluded myself to my room. I never had any true support from any family. When I was about 18 years old, I started experimenting with other drugs. I started to lose myself. In 2016, I found out I was pregnant with my first child. I got sober and started my journey of motherhood. I skip forward to the year of 2022. I had four children by this time, was pregnant with my fifth child. I was taking care of my four children the best I could with only the support of my significant other who was deep into a very serious opioid addiction. Um, he had many people come over, and one day one of his friends came over, and I was in need of escape from all my depression and my anxiety and my resentment towards my significant other and just taking care of children by myself. And I started using a substance that I never thought or had ever used before. It relieved my stress and gave me energy to get things done. Um, you know, I didn't have what most people see was fentanyl use. I had energy. I wasn't drowning out. It was, it was like an antidepressant for me. I noticed how it became very addictive. I was very dependent on it. If I didn't use it, I would end up getting sick. I could not get out of bed. It was impossible to take care of my children. I ended up losing myself amid my addiction. And then I found out I was pregnant with a little girl. And then I started on my journey of finding myself again. We and my significant other got pulled over and ended up getting in trouble with the law. With our charge having children in the car and paraphernalia, we lost our children to the system due to the struggle of drug abuse, and my biggest fear was losing my daughter after she was born. I then started to focus on my sobriety. I started taking medication to help with withdrawals and cravings. 
I started to work with Child Protective Services to get my children back. And with my CPS worker, social worker, I was offered help from an agency called Healthy Families. Now with Healthy Families, I received support from a family support specialist. She came in once a week, she sat with me for an hour and just listened to me and gave me ideas and things I could do with my children and developmental screenings to let me know where they were at with their milestones. She also listened to all the struggles I was going through without being judgmental, but also the presence she gave and never judging me and letting me know I wasn't alone. Because of healthy families, I was able to have visitations with my children and within a month, I had my children come back one by one. My significant other and I decided to give our new baby girl the name Serenity, but under one condition. We both had to be sober. After getting all of my children back, we were still working with healthy families, talking about morals, talking about our values and how we can work on them and make our family better, healthier, and stronger. We talk about mine and my significant other's relationships and the days I have bad days and feel alone, I know that I can lean on them and reach out. They help me to see the positive within the negative. Not only that, but they do things within the community to help you get out, be social, enjoy the outdoors. If it wasn't for my family support specialist this summer, I definitely would not have gone to the park as much as I needed to. I appreciate all the help and support and love I have received from healthy families. I hope more families learn and know that it takes a village to raise your children, that it is okay to ask for help. And if you need help, Healthy Families is there. I want to say thank you, especially to the ladies who helped me, just to have that support that I never received from anyone means so much to me. Thank you. And then also a reminder that um, this is our mission support for this month. It's not our continued to inspire ND and they, so there's a little list of some items they need that can go to the mission corner that will go to them and help them um, and tiny, a tiny way to support families like the one we saw in the video there. So let us continue um, drawing our focus to the place where um, God knits us together as part of the family of God. Um, the baptismal font with our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite the assembly to rise as you are comfortable as we sing together our gathering hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. today. Those of you in here already probably already guessed that. And Margaret Marcus Marcuson is our uh, assisting minister. So with that, let us go ahead and the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, teach us to hold your name in the highest respect and to speak it with reverence and honor, not only directly, but in our actions in the world. Make us to be reflections of your holiness Forgive our sins, set us apart for your work of love and justice in the world. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our brother. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today is our second of four Sundays on a series on the Lord's Prayer. So last week we talked about what prayer does, what is prayer. This week we're focusing on holiness, the holy name of the Lord. And Pastor Mary will take it from there. Next week she'll have the next two Sundays on the Lord's Prayer. So whenever you read something in the Bible, it's always helpful to see what story came before this one and what story came after it. So if you look at the Lord's Prayer in Luke's Gospel, the story immediately before is the story of Mary and Martha. And be a familiar story to you if it's not. There were two sisters who were hosting Jesus. He was coming over to visit. And one sister was doing all the work of getting everything ready, making the coffee and the cookies. And the other sister was sitting at the feet of Jesus, busy in another way, busy listening to Jesus. And this happened in the Bible. It probably doesn't happen anymore where siblings get a little irritated with each other. Doesn't happen anymore, maybe. But then those two sisters were kind of irritated at each other because the older sister was doing all the work and the other sister was just sitting around listening to Jesus. And Jesus said, hold on, this sister who's busy listening to me, she's doing what's needed. So there's something to say about prayer because Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer right after that. So there's something to say about making room to do what's 
seem like a waste of time sometimes, just sitting around, wasting time with Jesus, listening to what Jesus might have to say, because in that listening, we often hear what God needs to do next. We're going to hear how the name of the Lord is so holy, so let's talk about that first. We're singing one of the Psalms. Let's sing How Majestic Is Your Name. Thanks to Barb Arneson for leading us. Please read responsibly with me. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and you have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Gospel according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, slow our minds down. Help us to set aside to-do lists and all the other things that seem so important and help us to be open to what you need for us to hear today. Quiet our minds and our busy hearts. Help us to pay attention to your presence right beside us. In your name we pray. Amen. A few weeks ago, some of you know our family packed up and traveled to pick up my son at basic training in AIT for the Army National Guard. So off we went to Missouri. Who has been to Missouri? Anybody? Some of you. Missouri was a foreign land for us, somewhere our family had never been before. Most of that drive, as you can guess, guess, is quite familiar. That is to say, flat. (laughs) 
not a lot of trees to see. Uh, it's mostly a straight, uninspiring interstate trip. Uh, the only sounds, the roaring of the semi-trucks along the way. And then, finally, Missouri. Very suddenly, everything changes. When you cross the state line, the lulling sound of the trucks on the road turn to the sound of cicadas. Have you heard this sound before? Yes, so you know it's a loud, shouting sound from the cicadas either telling us, welcome to Missouri, or please turn back, one or the other. And unexpectedly, we entered a land of canopies of trees with carved out valleys, enfolding us in all this vegetation. We drove down winding and rolling roads that crossed over rivers, and every once in a while those big trees parted ways to give you a good view of the lakes. Unknowingly, we had entered the Ozark Mountains. We drove through the breathtaking beauty. I thought, if only we had some time to stop and look around, to smell the fresh air, to look more closely at all these trees. If only we could slow down and take it all in. But there was no slowing down. Even on those winding and rolling roads, even through small towns, there was no slowing down. The cars behind us were not interested in us slowing down. Going through a small town where you might expect the speed limit to decrease, it did not. We pushed ahead not wanting to get run over by the neighbor behind us. And we thought it would be so nice if there were more stop signs and we could stop and look around. And we thought, it's great, there are no stop signs, so we can just keep going. How often in your life have you wished to slow down? If I had more time, you've thought, I might not rush so much. If only I didn't have so many things to do. Or you might be retired and you do in fact have time, but you also have a routine. So to stop the car and get out might disrupt your routine. The Lord's Prayer includes one word that's like a stop sign. A word that is intended to slow you down, to slow you way down and even to get you to stop. The word is hallowed. And here we are with these strange words that we really only say in church. Hallowed is not a word you're probably going to use outside of this prayer, so let's look at it. Instead of the word hallowed, in everyday life, you might hear the word venerated, or better yet, we might say dedicated, or consecrated, or blessed. When something is hallowed, it is made holy. That means it is set apart. That's the definition of holy. So the bread and the wine are hallowed by the words of blessing. The person who is baptized is hallowed or set apart in God's word and the water. The view of the Ozarks from the car is hallowed as it takes your breath away. In the Lord's Prayer, the name of the Lord is hallowed. And does that name take your breath away? Hallowed is the stop sign, showing you how to slow down and pay attention to the holy. Two things in this world are holy, two things. The first is the name of the Lord. The Lord's name is holy. So Jesus, remember, is teaching this prayer as a Jew. The Jews are exceptionally careful when the name of the, with the name of the Lord because it is so holy. You might know this already or remember from confirmation. The name of the Lord in the Hebrew Bible, which is now our Old Testament, is Yahweh. Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E I can say this name because I'm not a practicing Jew, but if I were, I would never say the name Yahweh aloud. In fact, some scholars argue that no one, including Christians, should say aloud God's name in the Hebrew from the scriptures. The name of the Lord is so hallowed that to our Jewish brothers and sisters that that name cannot be spoken or written. It can be abbreviated using three letters from
from that Hebrew name, Y-H-W, to protect its holiness. Pray like this, Jesus said, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. A faithful Jew, Jesus is not saying the name of the Lord. He's protecting its holiness and instructing us to do the same. Jesus is putting up a caution sign here. This is a holy name, protect it, proceed with caution, move slowly, pay attention to the holy. Only two things are holy. Again, the name of the Lord is holy and everything else God made is holy. Everything around you is holy. The place where you sit, the water you might drink, the shoes on your feet, Everything around you is holy. The person sitting beside you, the empty chair at your dinner table, the plate that holds your meal, everything around you is holy. The sidewalk that connects your home with your neighbors, the park where children play, the juice box they're going to spill on the way home. Everything around you is holy. A poet, Wendell Berry, wrote that there are no unsacred places, only sacred and desecrated places. In the same way, author Andrew Peterson wrote, there are no unsacred moments. There are only sacred moments, and moments we have forgotten are sacred. Cruising through the Ozark Mountains, even though it would have been annoying to stop more, stopping would have woken me up to the sheer beauty of where we were, the place where we were driving through so quickly, too quickly, very quickly, and to avoid getting run over by the car behind us. And did I mention the frighteningly narrow shoulders on the road? And that's the thing, right? Americans, we move fast. Everything moves fast. People move fast, cars move fast, the changes move fast. We're all just trying to keep up, trying not to get run over by the neighbor behind us. So imagine this, what if everyone wants to slow down? What if you're not the only one uncomfortable with the pace as you begin to notice everything around you is holy and moving by in a blur? Everything around you is holy the bumblebee pollinating the flower, the lettuce pushing up from the ground, the hands that will harvest it. Everything around you is holy. The computer you sit in front of in order to make a living, the coffee in your mug produced by beans that were created by God and harvested and roasted and shipped to you, If you slow down to notice what's around you, you might see that everything around you is holy. Anything you can hold in your hand has been held by another hand. The ones who made your coffee or your garbage bags or that pan you used to fry your eggs. The things you have did not fall from the sky. Another human being made it, or at least part of it. And the someone who made it was made by God, and that makes whatever you both touch holy. Pray like this, Jesus said, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let this word hallowed be a stop sign for you as you pray the Lord's Prayer, I hope often in these weeks. Look around, look left and right, and up and down to see that everything around you is holy. The name of the Lord, the things in your life, the people, each moment is holy. I dare you this week to slow down enough to notice what is holy, and you may discover in everything that is holy that you are in the company of the Lord. Wherever you go, the Lord doesn't live in some far-off heaven, but here, now, with you, in the everyday matter and matters of life. So overcome was your God with desire to be near you, that God left the heavens to be born on this messy, broken earth where God has spilled holiness all over the universe like a bag of marbles broken open. We saw it in the Ozarks, but only from the inside of the car. 
what holiness might we have encountered if only we had slowed down? Amen. I invite the assembly to join me in professing the faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Being slow to pray, daring to let God take charge of our lives, we enter into this conversation with God for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Our Father, Creator, and Maker, thank you for the ministry of Bible camps, including Badlands Ministries. We pray today for the campers and the counselors tucked into the glory of your creation this week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Hallowed be your name. Thank you for giving us access to your most holy name. Open our eyes to the holy around us in our homes, workplaces, and neighborhoods, that we might recognize your presence with us. Let your presence be known to Hannah Kolvash and Peyton Johnson in their brand new marriage. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your kingdom come. This world is not as it should be. Thank you for the faithful work of Aspire North Dakota, providing resources and connections to people in tough spots in their lives, meeting individuals and families where they are. 
Let your kingdom light shine through their work, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your will be done. We pray for those who are sick or suffering, and for those who grieve, especially the family of Todd Cornell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Now and forever, your love is everlasting. Dry the tears of those who grieve and help us to trust in your holy promise of the resurrection through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gather these prayers, spoken and unspoken, and give us enough hope for today and then tomorrow. In the name of the one who is our hope, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take time to share signs of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. 
Holy God, you call us to live in this world, but not live for worldly things. We offer to you this portion of our worldly possessions as a sign of our love and faithfulness to you. Use them as you will, that all might heed your call to holiness. Amen. And so we draw our attention now to one of these many places where God comes to us, as Pastor Lisa had talked about. So we draw our attention to God's Supper, where we receive the gift of God for us. So we're going to skip right ahead to those words we've heard over the centuries, Jesus' words for us, the words of institution. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray that prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome, for this is the Lord's table. We have both gluten-free wafers and juice for those wanting those elements. For those of you who are at home, you can commune now um, and be part of this meal with us. For those who don't have someone to hear the words of promise to Hear these words of promise, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us feast on this meal of God's mercy and grace together.
receive this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your, with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just a couple brief announcements. Like I mentioned earlier in the service, um, Uspire and Healthy Families is um, our June uh, Mission Corner uh, collection and kind of offering collection. And so there are sheets at the entrances if you're interested in getting any of those items to leave in the Mission Corner for them. And then they are invited after worship to go over and look at the house. So feel free to go over to the White House and check that out there after worship here. And lastly, we do need a couple of meals for our day camp staff, the lovely staff from Bad Lads Ministries that's going to come and hang out with our kids here this next week. So if you um, feel so called to make lunch or a supper for our staff, please let Wendy Baumgarten know. Um, and you can help out with all our day camp excitement in that way. That's all the announcements I have verbally for you all today. Um, there, so with that, let us receive this blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to rise as you're comfortable as we sing our ascending hymn. are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.